Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Adam in the afternoon. My webcam looks weird. Sorry, I'll fix that. Sometimes it does this weird, like, fuzzy thing in the background. I don't know why. Um, hey, everyone. Welcome to this lesson. I hope you're excited to pick on what we pick up on what we covered earlier today on antonyms and synonyms. We're doing some vocabulary questions next, which is very exciting. We're going to look at more synonyms and antonyms, but see how they're used in different um, contexts too. So that's what we're doing. Who remembers the difference between a synonym and an antonym? We covered that this morning. Who remembers the difference? Before we get going as a little warm up. Hi, Louis. Hi, Eric. Nice to see you every so many familiar names. Hey, are you again? Um, hi, Arian. Hi, Thor. Nice to see you again too. I remember you were here this morning. Yeah, well done. So Oscar had the good definition for antonyms. They are opposite meanings. Hey, Nia. Um, synonym is the same. Well done, Adara. Remember that. Remember we covered the etymology of those words. Um, their Greek sin means with and anti means against. So that's exactly what they are. Hi, Trips. I'm doing very well. Thank you. Very good definitions. Well done, Janet. Well done, Tali as well. Louis, the yep, synonyms have the same meaning, really, really good. So what we're gonna do now is we are gonna build up on what we learnt earlier this morning. So we're gonna not only look at the antonyms and synonyms, we're going to see how they are used in different ways, okay? So what I'll do is I'm just getting the presentation up, then we will go through the presentation. So I hope everyone is ready. I'll just put it into present mode and then we'll get going. So before we get going, the, the warm up, I'm going to give you the word amazing. Could people tell me in the Q&A chat an antonym for the word amazing? What's an antonym for the word amazing? Who knows what that is? Can we get some good antonyms for amazing. I'll read out my favorites. And then I think you can tell what the next question is going to be. I'm going to be asking for some synonyms. So what have we got? Some synonyms for amazing. What's going to be my favorite ones? So I asked for antonyms. Unimpressing, horrible. Okay, I asked for antonyms first. Very good. These are all really good antonyms of amazing, disgusting, awful, horrible. Well done, Dina. Well done, Oscar. Are you rubbish? Totally. Um, terrible. Well done, Ina. Rubbish. Well done, Milan. Yes, these are all very good examples of antonyms of amazing. What about some synonyms for amazing? Can anyone give me any synonyms for amazing in the Q&A? So we've done the antonym, which is the opposite. What about some synonyms? Fantastic, really good. Well done, Janet. I think you were the first one there. Also, snap, loving the round glasses chat. Um, Eric, fantastic, well done. Incredible, well done, Mia. Well done, Janet. Stupendous, Paulina, love it. That's probably my favorite one so far. Brilliant, very good. Well done, Yusuf, astounding. Excellent, well done, Yasmin. Awesome, well done, Je Jedediah and Hadassah. Outstanding, well done, Avisha. Very, very good. Strong vocabularies, just like this morning. I'm not surprised. Okay, so the presentation is just loading. But like I said, we are doing definitions this afternoon. So we've covered synonyms and antonyms this morning. You can watch that video back on your lesson library or it is on YouTube if you want to refresh your knowledge on definitions. What we're going to do just to kick off the lesson what I like to do is I like to in reintroduce some topics that we covered a few days ago, just to make sure they've stuck in our mind. So to begin with, a nice little question on the poll, which of the following punctuation marks do we use to introduce a list? So this came up in the grammar gauntlet we did a few weeks ago and also was in um, the Get Ahead for Year 7 Club if you came to that yesterday night. So which of the following do we use to introduce a list? Just a warm up question before we get going with definitions.
Oh, Adara, breathtaking, a really nice synonym for amazing. Good job. This is just a warm up, so I'll just give us about a minute to have a go. So 15 more seconds to get your votes in. Okay, so let's see how we all voted. We can see the majority of us went for answer option A. Very well done. A colon is a piece of punctuation that we used to introduce a list. Really well done. Okay, so next we need to pick the punctuation mark that we put at the end of this sentence. So again, this came up last week. So we are building on the topics that we covered last week. What an amazing dress you're wearing. What piece of punctuation do we need to correctly end that sentence? Lightning speed, 50% of us with the correct answer in 15 seconds. Well done. If you need a bit longer on the poll, don't worry. We all have different reading speeds and that's okay. Another 20 seconds and then I'll end the poll. Have a sip of my kombucha tea drink while I wait. Keep myself hydrated. Okay, five more seconds. Okay, how did we all vote? So let's have a look. So the majority of us went for answer option C, which is completely correct, well done. We need an exclamation at the end of that sentence. This we covered last week. A lot of exclamations start with the word what. So what an amazing day. What a terrible haircut. <laughs> Don't say that one very often. That's not very nice. <laughs> um, but like what an amazing, uh, what an amazing lesson. What an amazing dress. Um, what a cool t-shirt. All that kind of stuff. So don't let that confuse you. Sometimes you might think you need to use a question mark because a lot of questions start with what to, but in this example, this is an exclamation. So we need to end it with an exclamation mark. We would say this out loud, give someone a nice compliment on their amazing dress. Okay, so let's get into what we covered this morning. I am going to be looking in the Q&A for some antonyms and synonyms again. So we started with amazing, but let's have a look at this sentence. It was a very perplexing evening. So can you give me a antonym of perplexing? Ah, oh, you, what an amazing teacher, Jo. That's very sweet, thank you. <laughs> um, so the opposite of perplex. So we want an antonym of perplexing. Yasmin, good answer, but that would be a synonym. Yashi, well done, simple. Tripped, well done, clear. Yep. Comprehensible, very good job, Demindra and, Avi and um, Avisha, understandable, very good. Straightforward, James, James, really good. So Esme, perplexing is something that is confusing. So if something is perplexing, you don't really know what's happening. So maybe synonyms and antonyms were perplexing to you this morning, whereas now they are not confusing. They are understandable. So it was a very perplexing evening. Maybe you went to like some kind of like webinar and you had no idea what was going on and you're just kind of like, this is perplex perplexing, this is confusing. I don't know what's going on. That would be an antonym for um, perplexing. Um, so other antonyms for perplex other antonyms for perplexing would be like understandable, well thought out, unambiguous. If we wanted to be fancy, if something's unambiguous, it's very like clear. But perplexing means confusing. So any antonyms for confusing would also be antonyms for perplexing. What about a synonym for perplexing? I've given you confusing, but do we know any other ones? So some other synonyms for perplexing. Ah, well done, Noreen, for writing unambiguous. I didn't see that before I gave that answer. Well done. Yes, and so if something is, I'm looking for some synonyms now of perplexing, bewildering. Well done, Satish. Really good words. Mind boggling. Very good, Vedance. Bemusing. Well done, Amir. Very nice. 
discombobulating. Ooh, Yasmin, that's a great word. Puzzling, very good. Milan, really good. Thomas, bewildering, really good. Bemusing, really like that one. Flummoxing, well done, Domingo. One of my favorite words. Uh, that's probably my favorite answer so far. Flummoxing is a great one. So those all mean confusing. So hopefully this will not be a very flummoxing or perplexing lesson. Fingers crossed, we'll, we'll find out, right? <laughs> so really good, well done on the warm up. Now, just to get us, just to get our creative brains flowing, we're gonna pick up on something we covered in the creative writing lesson on Friday. I want a simile to describe this ivy. So one, remember what a simile is, and two, can you use a simile to describe this picture of ivy? I think it's ivy, it might just be a house plant. Oh, as pointy as a needle. Well done, Ina. Really nice. Milana's tangle as a bush. Very good. As green as slime. Well done, Karim. Creeping away like a cat. Very nice, James. Nice bit of personification in there too. Well, I guess animalification. I don't know, but great simile. Tough as uncooked meat. Nice one, Yasmin. Reached out like a hand. Very nice, Mia. Really strong creative writing in here as well. As green as an emerald. Well done, Adriel. As long as a tree, nice, Kyra. As green as grass, really nice, Rachel. Like a clingy child, well done, Adara. I really like that one. Oh, meandering, meandering like a river, well done, Zena. Really nice. That I think meander came up in the lunchtime logic lesson today too. Another new word to boost your vocabulary. Really nice. As dark as a swamp. Oh, some really nice ominous similes coming up. Really, really well done, everyone. Okay. That's enough of a warm up. Thank you for entertaining me. I hope your brains are nice and warmed up and ready to learn. What we're going to cover today, we are going to be looking again at nuances. So picking up on what we mean by nuance of meaning, some strategies for working out the meanings of unfamiliar words. And you heard it here first. There's going to be questions. There's going to be polls. We know all about it. So let's get into it. So we're going to be looking at definitions, which will include synonyms and antonyms. Now, a definition is simply just the meaning of a word or phrase. It's important to consider that there will be nuances associated with words with a similar meaning. So to laugh, that's like, ha ha ha, to laugh. That was a terrible laugh, very fake, but you know what I mean. There's loads of different synonyms for laugh. Chuck, chortle, chuckle, chortle, giggle, smirk, giggle, guffaw, cackle, howl, snigger. They all mean um, to laugh. Now they have different connotations. Now what I mean by different connotations is that they all have slightly different um, meanings. So to howl, that is when you like something is hilariously funny, you are howling. That is a very loud laugh. Whereas a chuckle is like a little like, <laughs> like maybe you see like a funny pun on a on a cereal box or on an advertisement, you might chuckle to yourself being like, oh, that's a good one. I chuckle a lot when I see your math puns in the Q&A. So that's an example of a chuckle. I haven't howled at any of them yet. So that's a challenge. But a howl if I was hysterically laughing, crying, rolling around on the floor. Um, that would, I would be howling with laughter. So can we see there that all of those words have slightly different connotations? So they have a slightly nuanced meaning. A giggle is quite cute, like mm -hmm, giggle. Uh, whereas uh, to smirk is like, you're kind of laughing, but you're being a bit of a mean person at like kind of smirking like, ha ha, look at your, I don't know, bad haircut. That's again, not a nice thing to say, but someone who said that might smirk in a story. And then a cackle is like a ha, 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 maybe like a witch or something would cackle. You wouldn't really say that, uh, you wouldn't say like the witch giggled, really. You would be more like to say the witch cackled, unless it's like a cute little witch. But that's what I mean by definitions and nuances of meaning. Okay, so we covered synonyms this morning. Now, one way to find out the definitions of words, obviously, is to go look in the dictionary. Um, wow, Jono, good tip. But another useful tool would be to start learning synonyms of certain words. So can we think of any synonyms of the word, verb to cry? So we've done laughter. Can we do crying? What are some synony other ways of saying to cry? Just waiting to see. So how do we say 
and other other ways of saying cry. Sorry, I'm just scrolling. Sob really good. Alonial blubber, Eric, really nice one. Ina, yes, to moan, you might cry and moan. To wail, well done for dance. And um, Vape have both saying wail. To weep, well done, Sashin. To sob, to whimper, well done, Cortez and Montez. Love the love that the rhymes, that's nice. Weep, well done, Gwyneth. Yes, to be tearful, Rachel, that's a good, that's very close to cry. But remember, cry is a verb, so the synonym has to be a verb too. So to blubber, to bawl, to sob, really good, Zamindra. Um, Beater as well with sob. To sulk, yeah, that would be a nuanced meaning of cry, really, really good. To whine, well done, Yoss. Thomas to moan, very good. Oh, really, really nice. Burst out into tears, really nice one, Nicole. Yeah, really, really good um, answers, everybody. To sob, to ball, all of those mean to cry. So remember the nuance of the word meanings when creating a piece of writing will tell us something about the context. So if we have, let's look at an example to illustrate this. So the man stifled the sob, choking back the tears as he lay down, as he lay his hand down on the ground beside Marley's paw. The man couldn't contain his howling pain as he bawled out Marley's name and lay his hand beside the dog's paw. Wow, cheery Wednesday afternoon reading for us all. Um, I should have done. I should have done the sentences with a laugh. That would have been a lot more cheery. But how are those two sentences different? Can you let me know in the Q and A? How are those two sentences different? So yeah, really, really good. Very good answers coming through. Yes, really good. So in the first one, it's not as intense, right? It's a sob is like a small like, <laughs> whereas to howl and bawl would be really loud. There would be like tears flying, tissues flying. The man would be absolutely bawling his eyes out. It's a lot more, it's a lot bigger response. So remember, there's like a scale of words, right? So if we think about to cry, the synonyms will go from like at one, sh like shedding like a tiny little tear or like a really soft cry, like a sob. And then we'll work our way up all the way up to like a howl or a ba or bawling, bawling our eyes out. So that's like really intense crying. Whereas we might start out with a sob and build our way up to a, to a howl, you know what I mean? Interestingly, howl can also be used for laughter, a versatile verb. That's how, so learning a list of synonyms associated with words is a great way to boost your vocabulary. Okay, question time. Look at the word in bold and can we work out what it means? So I'm gonna relaunch the poll. I'll read out the sentence and then give you a minute to have a think. To ascertain the truth, he took the first magic tool he could find from the dubiously dangling shelf above his head and ploughed through the middle of the page with what looked like a cornucopia. Its point was sharp and irrefutably dangerous. This time he thought, I won't miss my chance. So well done. I'll give you some time to think. If you want an extension, who knows what a cornucopia is? Let me know in the Q&A. Also, I'm now just seeing really good answers for the differences in the sentence. Well done, Eleanor. The second was definitely more dramatic. Mark, there was a difference in intensity in those two sentences earlier as well. Haley, great description. Thomas, Alexander, Chris, and Temi as well. Really nice. Oh, okay. So now what is a cornucopia type of sharp weapon? A flower, a creature. Ooh. So we have a... a lots of different answers for cornucopia. What else do we do? I think similar, yeah, a horn. Yeah, very good, Eric, yeah, nice. 
so yeah, it's a symbol of plenty. It's not a cornucopia is normally like a like a like a horn, um, or like something that looks like a, like a horn or like a shell that you often like fill with like fruit and stuff. There you go. So how are we doing? About ninety percent of us have voted in two minutes. Very very good. I know that sometimes it takes longer to read sentences for a bunch of different reasons. So if you didn't get time to answer that, don't worry. You can always pay this lesson back. So let's have a look. We can see the majority of us went for answer option D. Very well done. So to ascertain something is to find something out, to ascertain the truth, get to the bottom of it. It's like you're a detective and you are making your way in the world and you're trying to ascertain the truth of a situation. We love it. Now let's go to find out the definition of irrefutably. Let's go. It's point was sharp and irrefutably dangerous. So once you've answered, if you want to, if you want a stretch, could you give me an antonym of irrefutably as well? So if you've already got the answer and you think it's right, give me an antonym of irrefutably. So this is quite a hard one and it's, uh, there is a very important nuance of meaning there. So do we have any antonyms of irrefutably? Okay. Not irrefutably, very nice try, um, anonymous attendee. So yeah, not able to answer him blunt. Okay, so I think irrefutably is causing a bit of trouble, but that's okay. So uh, definitely a tricky question. We've got a, spl a slight split in our answers. I'll give you another 15 seconds to have a vote. Ah, oh, my computer made a really nice sound when I took a sip, like a nice bit of onomatopoeia. Okay, how did we do? So, bit of a split in the answers with this one between A and E, with A being just a little bit more popular. Now, let's have a look. The answer was E, so well done to everyone who put E. Now, remember, this is all about our nuances of meaning. So if something is irrefutably dangerous, dangerous to refute something is like a rebuttal or to um, challenge something. If something is irrefutable, it's impossible to deny. It's undeniably dangerous. Like, it's objectively dangerous. You can't argue that that, the, that point was sharp and dangerous, okay? Now, incredibly, you, we could put incredibly into the sentence and it would still make sense, but due to the context of the sentence and what irrefutably actually means, incredibly is not the best answer from that selection, okay? So a lot of these words have similar meanings, but E, impossible to not to deny, is the best answer because it is most similar in meaning to irrefutably. If something's incredibly dangerous, it's very amazingly, astoundingly, ridiculously dangerous. All those kinds of words would go with incredibly. But for irrefutably, we would go with impossible to deny. We can't deny how dangerous this um, cornucopia is. Okay, so slightly nuanced meaning, but this is why it's really important to read for context. Okay, now... I talk about root words, prefixes and suffixes more than I ever thought I would because they are incredibly important when we are trying to work out the definitions of different words. So let's have a go at seeing if we can use prefixes and suffixes to help us work out the meanings of some of these words. So on the Q&A, can you type in what does cooperate mean and how could you use the prefix to get to that answer? So to cooperate. 
Does anyone know what that prefix um, co means? Yeah, well done. So we've got some great answers from Vedant, um, Paulina, Mary as well. So that co prefix, it means together. So well done, Beta as well. And well done, Alicia and Adriel, who got the all the definitions right. And Gwyneth and Chris and Annie too, well done. Co means with well done, Alex FB. That's exactly right. Um, the co prefix means with. So to operate is to do something. So like you operate some machinery or like you operate, I don't know, in my daily life, I try and operate as a functioning human being. Doesn't always go that way, but you know what I mean? Cooperate is to do something together or with. So cooperate means to work with. Really nice. So co means with it together and that root word operate means function or to work. So putting co and operate together makes us a brand new word. So we can use prefixes to help us get the definition of words. And the root word is the bit we add the prefix to. So if you don't know that definition, that's what cooperate means. Right. So let's try and put these skills to the test. What does the following word mean? Stop sharing. Let's relaunch the poll. Implacable. I always find this one hard to say. Implacable, implacable. I'm gonna go with implacable. I'll tell you why in a second. If you want to extend yourself, can you tell me some other prefixes that we use to make antonyms? So some other negative prefixes. Okay, while we wait, I see some great other negative fee, um, prefixes in the chat. Dis, in, in. Well done, Vapav. Well done, Ziwa. Rashmi with un, really nice. Eric with un as well. Annie with un too. Ziwa giving us two, you and I, I think you mean U N, not U R. Anti, really well, E, single letter, dramatic. I love it. Yashi, in, ir, ill, really nice. Dis, mon, non, well done, James, James. Annie, yep, well done. Dis Eric, two, really, really good. Damindra, really nice. Three in Dis and Miss, really good. Yep, we can make unorganized, really nice. Sorry if you, you should be able to see that word, implacable. Okay, so I'm gonna end the poll there. Share the results, and we can see that majority of us went for answer option B. Well done, that's completely right. So the way I would, you might not know all of the words, but im is a negative prefix, so we know it's going to be a, probably a negative description or something that it has will have not in it. So not able to please, hard to please. You might have come across the phrase to placate someone, to placate placate someone is to please someone or to like tend like tend to their needs. So um, implacable would be hard to please. There we go. Right. Next, we are going to look at some words that have something in common. And I want you to tell me what do the words in the screen have in common? Prefixes can also give us an indication on number and word meaning too.
So what do we think? Okay, really good job on the poll in a minute, about 75% of us have voted. Really, really nice. Let's see if we can get it up to 90% in the next 20 seconds. So century percent centipede. If you're a bit stuck, use try and use that word, use the scent part to help you. If you want to extend yourself, can you maybe tell me the origin of scent? Where does it come from? Okay, let's, I'm gonna end the poll now and see how we all voted. Sharing those results, so you should be able to see them now. And the majority of us went for answer option B, a few of us going for um, A, but the best answer is B. They all refer to 100 and that is due to cent. So century is 100 years, percent is part of 100. Um, centipede, it has 100 legs, so it's an insect with 100 legs. Now, did anyone get the origins of scent or know where it comes from? Let me have, just checking in the Q&A. So scent comes from um, centum, which is um, Latin. Latin for 100, centum. Well done. If anyone got that, I can't see. There's a lot of, a lot of the Q&A to work through, which is great to see. Um, all of you engaging in it. And yes, this is a bit like maths, it'll come useful in maths. And I'm drinking a kombucha tea drink for those of you who are um, wondering. Okay, sorry, I might have stopped sharing by accident, but they all refer to 100. So century percent and centipede, really nice. So century is 100 years, percent is out of 100 and a centipede has 100 legs, really, really nice. Uh, well done, Mia, Gwyneth, Freddie, who all got Latin as the right answer for um, the origins of scent comes from um, centum, which means 100. I guess it might have other origins. There might be more than one origin. It's quite an old word, isn't it? I think like cento in Italian also means 100. But that is the, that is the one that I am most aware of. Scent is also French money. Well done, Oscar. Really good. Okay. Let's keep going. So question time, what about these ones? What do all of these words share in common? We need to find the answer that best defines them. So we've got some fun words on the screen now. Anthropology, misanthrope, philanthropist. Ooh, we're getting fancy today. And yes, I absolutely love tea for, I can't tell a lie. Thank you, Alexander. I like my glasses too. Mixed bag in the answers here. These are quite hard words. Don't worry, I will define them all.
Okay, a few of us have still to vote. I'm going to start talking through what those words mean. And if you haven't voted yet, you will still have a opportunity to do so. So anthropology, misanthrope, philanthropist. What you should be able to see in all of those words is we have ants row. Okay, so let me annotate so you can I, you can see I'm not lying. So we have anthropology, misanthrope, and then philanthropist. So anthrop, I think even, yeah, anthrop, it even goes all the way up to be anthrop means human. Okay. So ology is the art of studying something. So like herbology is like studying herbs. Biology is like studying bio, like bio. So anthropology is the, is studying humans. Now, miss, we should, we all have probably seen that prefix miss before. That means like wrong. So like mistake or like miscommunication when you don't communicate something correctly. So miss means wrong. And then anthrope is again, pertaining to humans. So a misanthrope is someone who doesn't like humans. You might go through it in your teenage years. It's really normal. Don't worry about it. It'll pass. Then we have philanthropist. Phila means love and affection. So a philanthropist is someone who I'm um, loves humans because ist is is denotes a person who practices always concerned with something so like a dentist ist means dent probably has some kind of origin to do with teeth and then ist is someone who does something with teeth psychologist works with psychology so we can use prefixes and suffixes to give us indications about what words mean so even though some of these words are quite hard if we knew anthro means to do with humans it makes it a lot easier to understand it but we should be able to get some ideas of the connotations of the word. So ology, the words that end with ology often to do with the, something that you study. Miss means wrong. And then something that ends in ist pertains to a profession or um, an occupation normally, okay? So let's see how we all voted. I can see the majority of us went for answer option B. Very, very good. Let's get rid of the drawings and see you were completely right that answer is b it's all to do with humans really really nice so etymology of words is all about the origins of words and it can help us identify words do we do you where do you think the prefix phil comes from and what does it mean i might have already were you paying attention i mentioned it very briefly does anyone know where phil comes from it's not just a name Thanks, Swati, for the compliment on the tea shirt. I'm glad I have a fellow tea buddy in Zena as well. So what do we do? Any, does anyone know the etymology of the words fill? It's not Latin, I'll tell you that. Yes, well done, Elise, it is Greek. Well done and well done, Tally, as well. Ah, oh, Temi, really good. Phil means you love something really, really good. Yusuf had it as well. The etymology is Greek. Well done, Emir, as well. Really, really strong. So Phil comes from ancient Greek philia, meaning love and affection. So a philanthropist is someone who seeks to promote the welfare of others. There you go. See, etymology of words. It's all, um, all fun. So what is the etymology and meaning of phys? Okay. So phys comes from the Greek meaning nature or natural order. So I've given you a little bit of help, okay? With this knowledge, could you select the best definition for the word physiognomy? Wow, I was really ambitious when I was putting this one together, wasn't I? Physiognomy, physiognomy, physiognomy. So what is the best definition for physiognomy? <laughs> I'll try and say it better. Physiognomy, physiognomy, physiognomy.
So 80 of us have already got the right answer in a minute. Well done. Now, if you're having a bit of trouble, think about other words you know that end in like omi, maybe like astronomy. What does that mean? And what does the O M Y and astronomy astronomy do to the word? Okay, I'll give us another 10 seconds on this and then we'll move on. Okay, let's see how we all voted. So I'll share the results. You can see the majority of us went for answer option A, which is completely right. So the way we can work that out is if let's have a look at the words. We know we have, oh, I didn't want to cross it out. I wanted to underline it. So we know we have physio and that comes from nature or natural order. And then OMI is, is when you like, so astronomy, you're determining the stars. So it's about determining things. So physiognomy is the determining character or personal, the determining, the art of determining character or personal characteristics from the form or features of the body, especially the face. So the outward appearance of something might give an insight into its character. So this might become relevant in like, so in English, at the if you want to be a, make a really fancy sentence, you might say the author uses physiognomy to suggest the character's frosty dif disposition as the author describes the character as having icy white hair, something like that. So it's when the a person's character is determined through their body and facial features or their nature. So nature is to do with like um, body and features all that kind of stuff. So physiognomy is the determining of a person's character through their body and facial features. Oh, isn't learning new words fun? Okay, well done, everybody. Let's move on to the next question. So what is the etymology of the suffix phobia? So select the word that would be most suitable to follow on from this pa passage. So the Karate Kid had no fears, none except that the one fear that would hold him back if, it, if he wasn't to face it now. Hydrophobia had been his biggest burden as a child and it hadn't got any better as a teenager. He winced and placed his hands imploringly up to his chest in a prayer position before stepping reluctantly into the... Dun, dun, dun! Relaunch the pole. Go. So what do we think? Okay, so we've had about a minute. I will start giving you some hints. So the key word that we need to look here is hydrophobia. So phobia is when you're scared of something, right? So you might have like a phobia of spiders, arachnophobia. You might have a phobia of broccoli. I don't know if that's got a name, but maybe it does. Um, I used to hate broccoli, but then I started roasting it. Game changer, it tastes so good. Boiled broccoli, still not a fan. Roasted, delish. Anyway, hydrophobia. Phobia means you're scared of something. Hydro is to do with water, yeah? So the Karate Kid is scared of water. Now we need to read for context. In the story, we know that the Karate Kid is walking into something and he's nervous about it because he winced. So we know that he's not looking forward to doing it. 
that suggests to me that he's probably going to be walking into water because hydrophobia, scared of it. That would make me wince too if I was scared of it. So which answer is best? Let's have a look how we all voted. Oh, nearly relaunched it. We can see that it is hydrophobia. Well, so it's reluctantly going into the lake. Well done, everyone who got that question. Not only a definitions question, but also a bit of like author meaning questions. Really, really nice. There are lots, does anyone know any funny phobias? Some of them have got like really interesting names, like arachnophobia is scared of um, spiders, but you can have like, you can be scared of like little like circles, all, all kinds of stuff. Um, but yeah, right. So we have a couple of minutes left. So we're gonna go over um, I want to go over this word. I think it might have changed, but I think this is the longest word in the English language. Anti-disestablishmentarianism. What a mouthful, right? Does anyone know what that means? Yeah, well done, Tali. Arachne does mean um, spider and it is from the Greek myth of arachne. Really nice. That's where arachnophobia came from. Geophobia, scared of rocks. <laughs> like that one. So anyone have <laughs> brocophobia? I think that might be a fear of broccoli, um, Eleanor, you're right. Okay, maybe it's not the longest word, but it is a very long word. Justice, very nice. Um, I know, Yasmin, it makes my head hurt too. <laughs> it is a really long word. Oh, Nicole, great explanation. Really, really long. Um, it's the longest, oh, is that the longest word, Halima? Pneumolatracomuscular. I can't even say that, but it looks medical. Pneumo, I know, is lungs. Osis, don't know. Tramico, tramico, I don't know. In a different life, back in med school, I might have remembered that, but a long time ago. So anti-disestablishmentarianism anti is opposition to the disestablishment. Dis means not. Establish is to set up or begin. Disestablish means not setting up the Church of England. Well done. Was it Joyce got this first? Someone someone put this in the chat really early on, or quality of being. So anti-disestablishmentarianism is a position that advocates that a state church should continue to receive government patronage rather than be disestablished. There you go. Nice bit of fun to end the lesson. So well done, everybody, for coming to this lesson. If you have any questions, you can message us on socials where we post study videos on Facebook, YouTube and Instagram and TikTok. Or you can email classes at Atom Learning if you'd rather not go on socials. Wouldn't blame you either, but some people like it. Um, what happens next? You can check out. We have tons of antonyms, antonyms, studies videos. There will be an adaptive homework after this lesson, which will lock in all of the different knowledge that we've tested today. So log on to Nucleus and see that, um, or give it a trial if you wanna try it out and see if you like it. You can follow us for some more study videos too. I will be seeing you all, I think I'm done teaching for the day. I think so. I'll be seeing you all tomorrow morning where I think we're going over homonyms, homographs and homophones. I get tired of saying that, but once you get it, once you go through it, it works. So if you want to do some studying before tomorrow, have a look up of homonyms, homographs and homophones, because that's what we'll be going over tomorrow, tomorrow morning. I'll see you then at 9am. Have a lovely afternoon. Um, I know some of you will be going to math clubs later, which will be run by James. So he'll be running that. Bye, everyone. Thank you for coming and making this lesson so much fun. It brightens up my afternoon um, to come and teach. Um, so thank you for being so engaged in the chat and I will see you later. Bye. <laughs>